Good evening, Ignition students. We're coming at you live here at the ISM studio. My name is Pastor Sean. And my name is Kayla. We're here to keep you updated on the newest information. So first off, we have some breaking news. So we're going to go to you live at the scene with Eric. Breaking news. This is breaking news. This is a story of something bad and terrible that happened. Donald Trump just broke into my room, stole a rock for his wall, and left. Here's the footage now. I'm Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, yes. This would be great for my wall. Stealing this. China can't compare. I don't have the best wall. As you can tell, that was real footage. That, this is breaking news, and goodbye. Wow, that was intense. But Eric, I think you'll be okay. You have a hundred thousands of rocks. I have a feeling that may have been a staged event. But anyway, here's some fun facts with Nicole. Hello, and welcome to Fun Facts with Nicole. Did you know that May 29th is official put a pillow on your fridge day? This tradition spans all the way back to the 1900s. It's celebrated in Europe and the US to bring luck and wealth into the household. Did, Did you know that 7% of American adults believe that chocolate milk comes from brown cows? 7% may not sound like a lot, but it spans out to be roughly 16.4 million American adults. Did you know that a lion's roar can be heard from five miles away? More specifically, a lion's roar is 114 decibels, which is around 25 times louder than a gas-powered lawnmower. Thanks for tuning in to Fun Facts with Nicole. You know, I've never put a pillow on top of my fridge, but 2020 is the year to try new things, right? Yeah, okay. Probably not. Anyways, let's get back to Jai and Xander as they show us their weekly game board game mayhem. Welcome to board game mayhem. I'm Xander. That's Jaya. We're going to be talking about pandemic. Now, since we're all stuck in our homes due to the coronavirus quarantine, we deemed it only necessary that we talk about pandemic. Now in Pandemic, it is a two to four player cooperative game where all players will work together to defeat four deadly diseases. We will start in our headquarters in Atlanta. Each player will get to pick one of seven characters, such as the medic, the scientist, and the researcher. There are three ways to lose and only one way to win. One of the ways to lose is by going all the way down on the outbreak track. Another way to lose is by running out of cards in the player deck. The last way to lose is running out of infection cubes, which are determined by the infection deck. There is only one way to win, as I said before, which is by curing all four of the diseases. A quick tip before we go on, be wary of the epidemic cards. I like this game because you are on the edge of your seat the whole entire game. You don't want to go playing off somewhere else. And I like this game also because you get to do a story, kind of. I like Pandemic because it is a cooperative game which allows for communication between players and the development of lifelong memories. Now. We figured that most of you are new to the board game hobby, so we figured we might give you guys a few helpful tips. No messy snacks at the board game table. Okay. No phones at the table. You know that you have to stay at the whole entire game the whole entire time. Henry? No drinks at the board game table. Why do you gotta do this to us? We hope those are helpful as you begin your board game journey. Well, see you next week on Board Game Mayhem at Well, that looks like
like fun, especially now when we have so much time on our hands. And that probably would have been a good game for this past weekend when it was snowy, power was out, everybody was stuck indoors, could have pulled out the game pandemic. But anyway, this weekend it's supposed to be nicer. It looks like on the weather at least a little warmer, sunnier. So let's go to Trent with our one minute workout. Hey, thank you, Sean. Well, it's uh, sweaty knees here and uh, pizza rolls there. And we're gonna do a little exercise that you guys can do at home. So the goal is to throw those objects at that bowl. Close one wins. Here we go. Hey, pizza rolls here. The first thing I'm gonna throw is this basketball. All right, first thing I'm gonna throw is a golf disc putter. Okay, my next item is this stick. Here we go. Next item I'm throwing, an orange. My last item is this banana. Let's do this. Oh my gosh. All right, so I got my secret weapon right here. I'm guaranteed to win this one with you. So obviously pizza rolls had won. I hope you guys come up with more exercise that you could do at home. This concludes our little exercise, so hope you guys stay safe and have some fun at home. Don't go crazy. I don't know. I think pizza roll uh, practiced beforehand, so he had an advantage over sweaty knees. Yeah, I don't know. I think sweaty knees just uh, didn't realize his competition. I think pizza rolls has some hidden talents we didn't know about. <laughs> Well, anyways, uh, let's get back to it. Um, with having so much time on our hands, we want to encourage you guys to spend some time in, into worship. So here's Chris on some worship this week. Hey, welcome to a music moment. I want to let you know a little of what I've been listening to during this time, what's been encouraging me, helping me, and I hope it does the same for you. The first is an album by The Belonging Co. They're a group out of a church in Nashville, and their live album, Awe and Wonder. It's a collaboration album with artists like Carrie Job, her husband Cody Carnes, Natalie Grant, Meredith Andrews, and Sarah Reeves, and others. Guys, the album spans uh, the full spectrum, has songs of uplifting praise, and songs that'll get you moving and dancing, but also songs that are really just going to pull you into the close, intimate presence of God. Another group I've been listening to is Red Rocks Worship out of Colorado. Their Spark album, both the live and the acoustic versions, so, so good. Not only are the vocals absolutely incredible, but they've also got an awesome message of victory and really just expression of wanting the Holy Spirit to come and to move. So guys, go check out these albums, check out these groups, see what more they have to offer. We might even be doing some of the songs that are on these albums when we get back together. See you soon. Well, that was your music moment with Pastor Chris. Those are some good songs, some good albums. I know I enjoy listening to those as well. So we just encourage you to just spend some time in worship. And so coming up next with a word is your one and only me, Pastor Sean. And so before we get there, we just want to say stay tuned for next week. And this has been your Wednesday night information here at ISM Studios. Stay tuned, listen to the word, and have a good night. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. I hope this week is going good for you. I hope that homework hasn't been too hard. I know I've talked with some of you this week just with texting and, and I've been uh, been told by a lot of you it's just the homework's not too bad. It's just a little boring because um, it kind of lacks that social aspect with all your friends. So I hope and pray that you are getting through this, that you're not going to have to worry, um, and that soon things can can get back to normal and that we will be able to get to see you guys hopefully soon-ish uh, for a youth group to at least have some of that fellowship that we are missing. Uh, Kayla and I are missing your faces, just being able to interact with you guys. It's not the same just texting or calling, um, interacting on social media, and I understand that. But tonight, we are starting a new series called Infinitely More. And it, we're following the life of Jesus. We're going to be looking at several different aspects of his life. But tonight's title is called Just the Beginning. And because God always starts 
with the beginning in mind and he's been preparing his, with his with his preparation with his plans uh, for your life for my life um, he has the end in mind and so tonight we're talking about just the beginning and that the cross Jesus dying on the cross and, and God's plan for that that the cross was only the beginning and that it's much more than just coming to the cross but going through the cross to a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit and that we can discover and begin to prepare our lives for infinitely more than we could ever imagine. And so our, our theme verse for the next few weeks is in Ephesians, and it's chapter 3, verse 20. And it reads, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the opportunity just to spend time in your word. And I pray, Lord God, that you can challenge our hearts to just change our thinking uh, about you, Lord God, to go deeper with you in our relationship with you, Lord God, that to, to lean on you in these times, Lord Jesus, to trust you and know that you can do infinitely more than we can imagine. Even right now, Lord God, I pray that we do not put you in a box, that we do not limit you in your goodness and your mercy. We do not limit your power uh, during this time in our way of thinking. But I pray, Lord God, that you can just begin to, to show off who you are during these uncertain times. We just thank you, Lord, and in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, over the next few weeks, we are following, like I said, the life of Jesus. We're going to be looking at his teachings, his miracles, his declarations. We're going to walk through God's ultimate plan for you and for me to have a spirit-filled and to live a spirit-filled um, life and experience infinitely more and that's why the the title of this series is called infinitely more and so from the be very beginning of creation god's nature was very clear that he had the end in mind and it all starts with that and that's why in the beginning he he had the end in mind he knew what the outcome was going to be even before we did and so he always has a plan he always has a purpose he always has an answer and even when we don't know those plans even when we don't know those answers and because God knows more, he sees more, infinitely more than what we can think, what we can see, what we can even know. And right now, during these times in our lives, our future can be unclear. Your future could be unclear. I mean, the, your future of this week, of, of next month, within the next year, could be very unclear. But we do not know what the future holds, ultimately. Even before this, we don't ultimately know what the future holds. But God does. And it's very clear that, that, that God holds our future. God has a plan. And, and that future and those plans are not canceled. And so he has a plan for you this year. He has a plan for what's going on. And, and you may have had plans for, for later this week. You may have had plans for graduation this summer, later this year, travel plans. And maybe they were all canceled. Maybe everything that you plan from now till the end of the year got canceled. I know fine arts got canceled. I know that was a big bummer for a lot of a lot of you, a lot of students across Nebraska, not just Nebraska, a lot across the country. Plans were canceled. National Youth Convention and National Fine Arts got canceled this week. And that's not until August. There's a lot of plans throughout the year that have been canceled and, and are changing. And we don't always know those answers yet. And, and that so much is changing. So much is being canceled. But we do know that God's plan for your life is not canceled. God's plan for humanity and mankind is not canceled. His plans for your life are still at play even right now. You may, just may not see it. He, it's just the beginning of all that God has planned for you this year and your lifetime and see, our, our lives, they, they continually revolve around plans. They continually revolve around preparation for those plans. We plan out our day. We plan out our week. We plan out our year, sometimes almost down to the minute. There's times you should see uh, pastoralized calendars, and they're filled for, for daily things that we're meeting people. We're talking about things. We're, we're planning things for the church. And right now, it feels weird that everything got taken off the table and all the plans that we had for, for last month, this month, you know, were pretty much wiped clean. And our calendars are pretty empty, and it just feels weird. 
that, that the calendar is not full. And there's times that you may think, well, even right now, you're like, well, I'm just in middle school. I'm just in high school. I, I don't plan out that big of a deal. A lot of my plans are just come and go. But but you got to think about, like, when do you get up for school? When, when school was still going on and not just online classes. And so it's a little different right now. But I guarantee that, like, like for me, I knew what time I needed to be up at the last possible minute because I knew exactly how long it took me to get ready. So I knew exactly how long it took me to get ready. I knew what exactly what time I needed to walk from the house down the driveway. We had a 500 foot long uh, driveway. So I knew exactly how long it took us to get from the house to the end of the driveway to wait on the bus. The bus showed up almost at the exact time, give or take a few minutes, every day. And so I knew the last possible moment to get up because I wasn't a morning person. I'm still not much of a morning person. I know roughly that it doesn't take me long to get ready in the mornings. And so I can plan my morning based on how long it takes me to get up. Now, some of you may do the same thing. Some of you may just wake up and whatever time, you know, oh, I got a long time to get ready. Oh, I, I have to get going. But we plan stuff out like that. Maybe you plan on what, what you're going to have for lunch or maybe what you were going to take to lunch for school. You have to plan your schedule around your work schedule for those that do work and are still working because you get a schedule and sometimes you got to plan around that. I know Kayla and I many times have to, like if we want to do something on the weekend um, before this, uh, we could go places and do more things. And we had to plan around the weekends that she worked. So if she potentially worked on a Saturday, sometimes it's very rarely that she has to work on a Sunday. But when she's on call and has to work on a Saturday, we would have to, to plan around that. We'd have to, okay, we want to we wanna go to Hastings to a coffee shop. We want to go to Kearney for lunch. We want to go to Omaha for the weekend on a Friday night, Saturday, or something like that we did on occasion. We had to plan around her work schedule. And so those factor into our plans. Maybe you just want to hang out with friends, spend time with family, go to go to the beach. I, I mean, travel and take time to go to the beach or the mountains or camping or whatever. We plan so much. You may plan to, to hang out with your friends. You, you may plan homework time, video game time, TV time, social time, whatever that might be. We plan out and we prepare for those plans. We look forward to the plans that we set. And oftentimes, we plan out so much that we barely leave room for church activities, for just spending time with God at home, and we almost plan God out of our daily lives. See, with our lives and our culture moving so quickly, moving so fast at a rapid pace, we do our best to leave no room for errors. Because if, if we're honest, we don't want to plan mistakes. We don't plan for errors. We don't plan for mess-ups. We don't plan for unplanned moments. That's not what we plan for. But those things happen, and, and when those things happen, it messes up our plans. You think about, uh, you forget a homework assignment. You know, you, you're, even right now, online classes, maybe you, you miss something, you completely forgot about something, and then you all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, you, you forgot about an assignment and you failed it. Maybe you failed the test. Maybe you, you had this big essay and you, you had to turn it in in paper. Like I remember in high school, we had an essay we had to do for uh, biology. And you had to submit it via type it out, print it off, turn it in on paper. I mean, there was no emailing it, turning it online. There was none of that. And so we had to bring it and turn it in via paper. And so if you didn't bring it the day it was due, you failed that paper. And it was a huge paper. Like my biology paper in high school was, was worse. I want to say worse. It was graded more harshly, I feel like, than some of my English papers. We had a mandatory 10-page biology report over a topic. And at that time, I did the effects of caffeine and what it does on the body. I don't remember all of what I wrote, but I remember it was roughly a 15-page paper over all said and done. And then like we had for English and stuff like that, we had these big papers, but they were due on a due date. There was no forgiveness. It, it was either it's due this day that you bring it in or you fail for that assignment. And so you may, something like that where you forget about a due date, you forget about an assignment. And maybe that messed up your plans. It messed up your GPA. It messed stuff up for your life. 
uh, maybe in the future, maybe that grading period or something like that. Maybe, you know, that failed assignment messed up how much you're going to get for allowance or, or something like that. And maybe you forgot your lunch at a different time or, or lunch money for school or, or whatever that may be. Maybe you forgot about uh, sports practice or choir rehearsals or, or, or show choir or, or your concerts or your games or, or anything like that. Maybe you forgot about one of those. Just You just totally spaced out and it messed up your ability to play or perform. Um, anything like that. Maybe, maybe for those that work, you had a flat tire on the way to work. Maybe it just happened and, and it caused you to be late. Maybe lose a job or something like that. I know uh, two weeks ago, Today, two weeks ago today, Kayla and I were on the way to the church, and I was going to be recording for uh, for Wednesday night for youth service. We leave the house, we go out here on the web, and I felt something weird with the steering. The car was going left, um, really hard, and so I thought something wrong was wrong with the steering. But come to find out, we had a flat tire, so I pulled off over at Subway just down the street, and of course. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's not low, it's flat. I mean, there was a, a big old screw that was right in the center of the tire somewhere we ran over. And um, we were just riding on the rim. And so I don't know if it happened, you know, just on our road or if it happened overnight, like the day before um, when Kayla went to work and it just took time to, to lose all its air. But but we get in the trunk and I'm pulling out the donut, you know, and, and to change the tire. And we have the jack. And there's no tire iron. And so I was thankful we're not too far from the house. You know, it was a few blocks. So we walk home, get everything we need. And I take my truck and we drive back and I change the tire. And I ultimately have to go to uh, over to Discount Tire to, to, to get a new tire. And so we were thankful that we have a warranty or had a warranty on the tire. And it didn't cost us anything um, to get a new tire. And so we were very thankful for that. But it just, it created, um, and it was an unplanned moment. And it took time out of the day when we planned on doing some other things um, throughout the day and it kind of pushed those plans back, kind of messed up some of those plans, but also when we still got things done, but unplanned moments can mess up, mess up our day. But, but maybe, maybe there's the, the unplanned moment of a, a, a lot of rain and you get a thunderstorm and the power goes out. I know Sunday people's power was go went out and, and on a Sunday, Easter Sunday of all Sundays for, for snow, uh, for ice, for not to be able to be at church, power goes out. And I know that made it hard for some people to even watch the service that was unplanned. Maybe uh, maybe there's a, a virus that spreads quickly and causes a worldwide pandemic. It's unplanned in our lives of what's happening right now. And so our plans can be completely ruined and completely changed because of unplanned moments. Whether those moments are under our control or outside of our control, when those moments happen, they seem to shut down our world around us, whether that be failing an assignment, whether that be getting a flat tire, whether that be this pandemic we're in and we have to be at home. It's unplanned. It's changed the plans that we did have or ruined them altogether. And it's causing our world, not just as a whole, but just around us, our world, our little bubble. And it's causing it to shut down. And so God had a plan from the very beginning for you and for me. Had a plan from the very beginning. And in the book of Genesis, go all the way back to the beginning. In the beginning, we, we find God living out that plan with Adam and Eve. We find him walking and talking with them in the garden. And spending time with them. It's, it's this perfect plan, the picture of the most perfect plan possible. But because of one selfish act. One selfish moment. Sin was then birthed into the world. Sin came into the world through the act of Adam and Eve. And it, and it seems like it, it messed up all the plans. It messed up the perfect moments. And, and because of this, that, that perfect world, so to speak, around Adam and Eve was no more. But we can be thankful that God initiated a plan that has some room for error on our part. He, he, he made a plan for us from the beginning to redeem us for when sin happened. By giving us that free will, by giving Adam and Eve that free will to make a choice, he knew that most likely one day they were going to mess up. 
And so instituting this idea of, of his sending his son into the world to die for us, to take on our sins, to make a way to redeem us, was in the plan from the beginning. See, point number one, and, and tonight's got, not going to be super long overall, but, but, but point number one is God's plan leads us to the cross. See, God had a plan to crush the power and penalty of sin in the world, in our lives, and from the very beginning. And it's important to remember that Jesus was at the foundation of the beginning. He was at the foundation of the world, and it was more, um, and, and he was more than prepared, more than prepared to come and to die on that cross, to come as our Savior, to make a way for you, to make a way for me. And the cross was that reaction to sin. Sin took place, and the cross was the safety net. The cross is what catches us. The cross, the, the, the grace that he gives us because of the death on this cross, the forgiveness that he extends to us, it was the rescue that had been planned from the beginning. The Old Testament it shows us pictures that we can look at, stories in the Old Testament, people in the Old Testament, that ultimately point to Jesus and through that redemption. Like we look at Noah's Ark. We look at what God told Noah to build this ark that he was sending the rains and, and it points to a Savior who's going to rescue us and help us escape from spiritual destruction. We have Abraham and, and, and his son. He's told to take his son to the mountain. He's told to sacrifice his son. And he trusts God and God provides, provides for him and he doesn't ultimately have to kill his son. But it points to a, to a God who is willing to send his son to die for you and die for me, to make a way for that forgiveness, to make a, a way for grace, to make a way for us to go to heaven. And then we see that John the Baptist in the New Testament, he had the unique honor of introducing Jesus and God's plan for us. And so if you'll turn to John chapter 1, starting in verse 29, and it says this, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one I was talking about when I said, A man is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I have been baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. I didn't know he was the one. But when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, The one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the chosen one of God. See, God's plan leads us to the cross where Jesus removes our sin and restores us to him. He restores that relationship. He restores that hope. He restores our lives and in Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 8, it says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by death of his Son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his Son. So now we can rejoice our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ had made us friends of God. This week's title, Just the Beginning, it, it reminds us God's plan. It reminds us of God's plan to lead us to the cross. But leading us to the cross is just the beginning. We're never intended to stay at that moment. We're never intended to just make a decision to follow Jesus and then just stay there. Make a decision to accept him as our personal savior and stay there. Point number two, God's plan does not just lead us to the cross, but leads us through the cross to have a relationship with him, to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. See, as if Christ, uh, Jesus's death and resurrection was not enough, Jesus shows us that the cross was just the beginning, and his plan was to do infinitely more in you and in me, through you and through me, 
Remember the words of John the Baptist in John 1, 30, starting in 33 and 34. I didn't know he was the one. But when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testified that he is the chosen one of God. Even before Jesus began, his ministry journey, he had three and a half years of his ministry, the plan to send the Holy Spirit to us was already enacted. It was already in the works. It was already written, and, and, and it was in place. His journey to the cross, Jesus' journey to the cross, was just the beginning. His journey to the cross, the work that he did on that cross, it's just the beginning in your life. It, it, it's just the beginning in getting to know Him. It's just the beginning of our relationship with Jesus. When we choose to follow Him, when we choose to accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, and we choose that forgiveness, we, we accept that grace that He gives to us through the work that He did on the cross. It's just the beginning of your relationship with Him. See, see that, that beginning helps us to get to the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. His plan to empower you to accomplish infinitely more than you could ever imagine. His plan to, to go beyond your own limits, what you're capable of doing by yourself. His plan in working through you to accomplish His plans of reaching the ends of the earth for the gospel. He wants to do so much more in you, so much more work inside of you that he's not done yet. This is just the beginning. Think of this stage of life as is, is, is taking time to learn what does God want to do in me right now? What does God want to do through me right now? And you can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to fulfill the plan that he has set before you. He wants to continue to work in your life. He wants to continue to work through your life, especially in this season. Remember, our world may be shutting down and, and being things are plans and, and everything may be canceled because of what's going on. But God's will for your life, God's plan for your life, God's plan for my life, God's plan for, for mankind is not canceled. He still wants to redeem people. He still wants to come to you and draw near to you. He still wants you, he still calls you child. He still calls you loved. He still calls to you and wants you to have a relationship with him. And so tonight you may be like, man, I haven't decided to follow Jesus. I haven't decided to have that relationship with him. I haven't decided to follow in those footsteps and accept that grace that he gives to us. So I challenge you tonight to dig into the word. I challenge you tonight to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. To accept that grace that he gives to you. And I'm just telling you that, 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 that moment that you accept Christ, the moment that you accept the work he did on the cross, it's not the end. It's the beginning of a relationship with Jesus. It's the beginning of the work God wants to do in and through you. Because what comes next is being empowered by the Holy Spirit to fulfill the plans and to fulfill the callings, to fulfill the purposes that he's put in your life. Reaching your friends for him, reaching your family for him sharing the gospel, loving on people, doing things for others, living obediently to the word of God. And you may say it, it, it's harder during this time. I know it's harder to connect with people right now. It's harder to share the gospel, so to speak, in person. But just like we're doing youth service online and I have this online platform for you guys you guys also have a social media presence. You also have an online platform. You also have a voice that you can use to glorify God. What are you, those of you that use TikTok, what are you guys posting? What are you guys doing? What are you guys mim mimicking? Use it for Jesus. Just like YouTube, there's so much stuff on YouTube, but we're utilizing it for Jesus. Posting online services. For now, anyway until we can meet together again. Use the platform in which you have to glorify God because his plan for your life has not changed. It is not canceled. It is just the beginning. And I'm excited to see what God is going to do in you and through you during this season of your life. 2020 
is going to be a year that you're not going to forget. But are you taking advantage of the change of plans? Are you taking advantage of these moments that everything, the busyness in our schedule just got shut down? The plans that we had just got shut down. And are you taking advantage of that to spend more time with the Lord? To spend time in the Word and really ask God, what is it you want from me? What is it you want to do in me? And what is it you want to do through me? And remember the cross, that accepting Jesus is just the beginning. He wants to empower you to do infinitely more. Empower you to do infinitely more than you could ever imagine. And so just trust Him tonight. And so Father God, we just thank You for Your Word. We thank You for what You did, Jesus, that day on the cross so long ago. Just as we had Easter and we celebrated Your resurrection. We celebrated Your life. And that empowerment that you can give us. Lord Jesus, I pray right now that those that have not accepted you, I pray that tonight can be the night that they make a decision to follow you. And that they understand that it's just the beginning. That their relationship with you doesn't stop at the decision to follow you. It doesn't stop at the cross. But the cross is the beginning moment. We are now being made new in your sight. And even from the beginning, you wanted to send us the Holy Spirit to empower us to fulfill the callings, to fulfill your work in our lives, and to fulfill your plans through our lives. I pray that we can step out into those plans and know that the plans you have for us are not canceled. But right now, it's just the beginning. And I pray, Lord God, that you help us, you give us the strength to do what only you can do through us, Lord God, that we trust you. Lord Jesus. And in Jesus' name, amen. Just remember, those, especially those that, that signed up to be campus missionaries, you, 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 you signed up to tell people, you, you told me, I want to make a decision. I want to make a declaration to say, I'm going to reach my school for Jesus. I'm going to tell my friends about Jesus. That plan, that purpose, the reason that you chose to do that hasn't stopped you still have a way to reach your school. Because it's not about the building. Just like the church isn't just about the building, it's about the people. Your school, it's about the people. And you still have a platform and to reach your friends. You can still be a campus missionary right now, even while not being on your school property. Because you can't save the property. You can't save your school building. It's about your friends. It's about your teachers. It's about those that you were around. And you still have a way to reach them. So I encourage you to do just that. I encourage you to still have conversations about Jesus. I encourage you to use the social platforms online to talk about Jesus. You don't have to do a service. You can give a little devotional. You can just talk. You can share videos. You can share verses. There's things in which you can do to share the light of Jesus. And so, guys, I just I pray for you guys. I pray that you guys are doing well. I pray that you guys are still spending time with the Lord and, and I just want you guys to ultimately reach out to one another. Uh, my challenge for this next week, and I think I, I, I shared it a couple weeks ago or maybe the other week. I don't know. I shared a picture. But this next week, from this Wednesday to next Wednesday, I want you to text at least one other youth, one other student from Ignition. I want you to call at least one other student from Ignition. And I want you to, to whether it be write a letter, whether it be reach out to, whether, you know, whatever, do something like that. But ultimately pray for each other. And, and if you want to reach out to somebody and you don't have their number, just let me know. Just let me know that, and I can get it to you so you can call them, you can reach out to them, you can text them, hey man, I'm just praying for you. And so I, and also I want to challenge you guys just to pray for, pray for the ladies uh, right now. And, and I know that um, they've been sick. And so we want to, we want to pray for them. And I want, we've been praying for them. Keon and I have been praying for them. I want you guys to pray for them as well. Just pray for the Northridge family. There's several that, that, that are sick right now. And, and we just want you guys to pray um, that God's hand can be upon them to bring healing, um, to bring peace in their lives. And so, um, guys, have an awesome night. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and, and stay tuned for next week. We're just doing more. We're trying to do more to reach you guys, to be more interactive, to be more fun. 
so we can't wait till next week. But ultimately, what I'm most excited about during this season is one, getting to see you guys again, but two, getting to see what God is doing in you and through you during this season. So we love you all. Have an awesome night.